Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2, where I'm always excited to introduce the Terran player in the blue. It's Micro Jackson. Bia. One of the most entertaining players in the entire world. Though, in my opinion, recently dethroning him for that particular title. It is the final boss. It's dark. Always entertaining and rarely the same thing one day to the next. This is a matchup I've seen many times before, and a matchup I'd happily cast many times again. As beyond stubborn resistance to the meta meets with Dark's ignorance of it. In a constant back and forth Terran versus Zerg that could swing heavily either way or meet in the middle. Either way, I hope you'll meet me in the middle. And like, and subscribe. Jimmy, what? What are, what are we at? I... 1,000... 144 likes. If we get 1,144 likes on this video, on this cast, I'll uh, cast another series. Statistically likely to be these two. Mm, especially dark. But, either way, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. And I think it's about to get a little bit better. Best of five between these two. Neo-Humanity. The most, um... Not a particularly non-standard map, but let's be honest here. Um, slightly burnt toast is the... Uh, not, not in the dramatic health condition way, but instead in the... We haven't really adapted the maps very much, SCT. The, the new map pool coming up soon, TM, uh, is looking pretty interesting and a little bit different. But I won't spoil it, but instead, six Zerglings made it by in the moment. They get to the base, speed finishes, but Beyond's Marine sidestep and easily dispatch the Lynx, even the SCV. Ah, uh, well, it was a great, a great timing by Dark. Almost pixel perfect. Those Zerglings getting in the exact moment speed finishes, evading the Reaper, and Beyond doesn't care. He has Marines. This is a eternal constant in StarCraft 2. And, uh, Beyond Games. Guns down and Overlord. Roachborn is on the way, but off to a, uh, bit of a difficult start is Dark. As, as look at the drone count. 32 drones. In order to get six lengths, slip them by the Reaper, and now has to get more. Uh, Dark has cut into his potential e economy. And Beyond hasn't slacked on his either. He has his third command center already completed in the main base. He's... Looks like he wants to go for the single drop of Marines here. The support squad, early on. That, for most players, this feels like maybe a little bit too much to ask to actually control this. Well, Dark slips in again. There is no way Beyond will turn around. There's a single Hellion, a couple Marines, a Cyclone, a.k.a. more than enough to drive back the Zerglings. Also should make Dark an intensely suspicious as to where the rest of the units are. But the Overlords will spot it. The Queens, the Welcoming Committee, not so welcoming to uh, units that remind them of the flight they lost. And Marines in general. But Dark should have enough to drive this back for now. He's got his lair started. we got some roaches on the way. Cloak Banshee is the choice. A bit delayed, but not unwelcome. Cloak Banshee after Medivac, just meandering around the tech tree. It is going to be a bio build, of course from beyond, as he's already got multiple barracks and the double engineering bay alongside Stim. Cyclone, oh my god, is he really? He's using the Bubula, the slow zone here in the center. Uncovered right now as the rocks haven't been taken down yet. And uh, beyond actually manages to turn it against the roaches and it helps him pick off at least one or two more. I haven't seen anyone, well, it's beyond, so I think you can summarize most things. Saves most of the Marines. Gonna try to snap up the Cyclone. The Bobula turned against him. Slow down there, mister. There's no getting away from us. Dark snaps it up. Though the Cyclone was mostly for early defense against some sort of crazy all-in. Maybe a Nidus. Uh, ge general, the Cyclone is a good general purpose uh, single target unit. At least for now. So... Uh, on top of that, the Banshees should be more than enough to drive back any attacks. He's not going to be hurting. Has he lost the Cyclone particularly much? It's not a Marine. Okay, Beyond doesn't care that much about it. 
Roach, speed is on the way. Double Evo. I'm always concerned when I see this. I get the idea. You, you'd rather lose Evo Chambers than you would um, lose the base itself. But at this stage... Ooh, Queen assassinated. At this stage of the game, when Beyond is very likely to be doing double drops around the entire map. Having... Wait, are those deco... No, no. Those are active evolution chambers. So even though they will certainly stall out any sort of attack for... A decent bit. It's still a little risky, in my opinion, to have your critical upgrade so exposed. But I think Dark knows what he's doing, all right? So. He's been around this block a few times before. And another queen taken out. Dark is going to rely. He's, ne he's never one to overdraw. As long as he has most of the information. The only times I've seen it. Yeah, are against, I think, Hero, when Hero gives him all the wrong signs. But Beyond, what Hero has in originality, Beyond has in consistency. Beyond is going to micro Marines. Okay, maybe he'll throw in some siege tanks. He's playing around with Banshees. It's going to be Marines, almost exclusively. He's got two siege tanks and 33 Marines. He's pumping out of five racks. He's already got one one done. Dark is going to go for a mid-game Nidus. Not even like a knight is all in, just a tech to knight is brood war style here. Which is, you know, uh, between burrow move and the knight is, he's exploring all the depth of options, if you would, that Zerg has. Uh, and quite a lot of them indeed. Combat shield completed. So beyond, I'm surprised he hasn't started. Okay, he's surprised he hasn't started his 2-2 either. As there it is. Kicks it off. And now, you know, the roaches are making their way through. It's unclear who who is going to be the greater aggressor here. As infestation pit is on the way. It, it does appear that Dark wants to get something done with his one one. Beyond chopping at the bit to move out, but he realizes that with Roach Ravager, he has to survive the initial assault. We've seen so many Terrans broken on the anvil here of their own base against these uh, big roach attacks. Nidus Worm detected, but Beyond reacts immediately. He deals with it. Dark is trying to slip through and snipe off the tanks. He's gonna get, eh, he gets one. Actually misses a few corrosive biles. And Beyond, more than where, on all fronts here, is able to drive back the Ravagers and even hunt many of them down. Definitely an efficient trade. Yeah, Beyond ends up killing a thousand more minerals and five times as much gas. Another Nidus. A scan looking for maybe burrowed units there. The Nidus may finish just barely, but mm, yeah, well, a uh, quick and painful death. The Ravager is going to try to come in again. Beyond is not at home. Where are you? Of course he's going to hit again. Roaches are not a costly unit. They're called roaches. <sighs> Aptly named. Well, and now dark. Wave 2 looking pretty strong, but Beyond has most of his army on the other side of the map. He's comfortable enough defending at home. He does have that Banshee slowly chipping away. Dark is going to try to break in, but Dark actually wraps around the back with the Ravagers. Beyond not really anticipating this, it seems. And the tanks are easily taken down. The survivors will evacuate into the two medevacs left remaining. And, well, Dark is able to loop around and smash that army on both sides of his roaches. He does lose the hatchery at the front, though. So he does lose that, that bit of economic advantage he had. But he takes out so much of the army supply, he's going to try to turn that into an attack. Unfortunately, the corrosive vials are thrown up, but they barely find anything coming down. Oh, getting more and more. He knocked out a bit of the bio, but the Ravager count is clearly whittled down to the point where Beyond is just routing this army. He's got 2-2 two -two done. If the bio units are not hit by corrosive bio, with metafax, they can easily stand and fight. 2-2 two -two is on the way for Dark. He, where's the hive? He doesn't have one. He's actually quite committed to this. It's almost all in. Well, he starts the hive, thus contradicting that previous statement, but... Ah, uh, plus three armor. Beyond didn't actually start plus three weapons, and that has to be a mistake. He, he might not have had quite enough to start it. Right when he clicked on those engineering bays, but that is one of those little things that could 
come back to bite him. Eh, it's not even a little thing. It's like a moderate thing. Okay, I'm not compensating. It's 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 average size thing. I'm just saying. One upgrade out of two. Okay, that's about halfway. Right in the middle. That's what average is. Investor's on the way for dark as he's survived. Honestly, very hard to tell at this stage who has the advantage. In many ways, Beyond's unit composition is superior. He's got the siege tanks, he's got the upgrades, and he's got... He can kind of continue down this way. But Dark is slowly filling in all the pieces he needs to really round out his army and smooth out the jagged edges. We've got Infestors, we got Bane Lakes, Hive for Vipers, and so much more. Ragnarok, can you name one upgrade that we can get with Hive? Tightness! No. Adrenal glands for Zerglings. Oh, one queen taken down by the brave marines back here. Two vipers on the way. Adrenal glands. Thank you, Dark. As full Ling Bane. He's got the hatchery count. Now he has the production. The Roach Ravager isn't going to cut it for much longer. It just doesn't have the damage. He was leaning on the supply count before. The Roach Ravager is so strong, not because of uh, it's each individual unit's strength, but of embracing that, that Zerg style of overrunning your opponent. Unfortunately, as time goes on, it becomes easier and easier. With a well-upgraded Terran army, it just scales better. Okay, as the Terran army goes into 3-3, three, three, you got siege tanks, planetaries, what have you. Uh, the Road Ravager doesn't have the potential that Ling, Bane, Viper does. The Vipers, of course... For well, there's a there's a wide array of uses. Uh, parasitic bomb for the medevacs, blinding cloud for everything on the ground. Parasitic bomb, I already said that one. Neural parasite, as well as one of Dark's favorites, turning those Terran units against him. Infester thrown out. Also very good with those vipers if you're able to combine them. A beyond starts his ghost production. The one size shoots all solution to pretty much everything Zerg. Of course, the main issues being its cost, its fragility, and its painful death screams every time you lose one. Not in that necessarily that order. Filling in 3-3 now, and very importantly, plus three vehicle weapons. Not just for the siege tanks, but potentially for the hell chads to be able to immolate zerglings in a single hit. Well, not really hit, more like um, just uh, melting fire, but idea stands. Vipers looking for an opportunity, but a couple Vikings added in. Always a good addition in this sort of scenario. And, well, EMP. The Vipers negated and then taken down. The Ghosts in retreat. Most of them, almost all of them surviving so far. Lines up the Snipes. Big targets on those Ravagers. Looks like he got one, two Ghosts. But Beyond actually has the supply lead, even after another production cycle. Dark is building 66 links, and Dar uh, Beyond is still ahead on supply, which does not bode well for the Korean Zerg. It feels like Dark actually, he, he wanted to win before we got to this stage. He doesn't want to fight Beyond when he has a, an entire History Channel series of ghosts. But here we are. And even though Dark is one of the best players at actually managing this late game Zerg army and dealing with the ghost composition, it is thin margins at best. And Beyond is very unlikely to get his, his ghosts all caught in a fungal uh, or even neural parasite. And he's very much about building those extra command centers. He's already got five orbitals. He's building multiple extra commands here. Another armor even. I love the burrow. It's the Banshee. I don't know how long that Banshee survived, but I think that was the one from earlier. He's just scanning. Uh, Terran's more and more realizing they have map hacks, I mean orbital scans, built into those command centers. No reason not to be scouting for any big tech switches. What does he find? Did he see the Hydra Den? He scanned the Hydra Den as it was building. So, uh, he got a good idea of potentially a lurker timing or the just the fact that the army is kind of converting into the more mobile hydraling bane composition looks like we got a nidus on the back but plenty of units back at home so far dark has lost about double the gas but uh, a similar amount of minerals here come the ghosts are there any infestors throws up some corrosive bile 
Knocks down a Liberator or two. Most of the ghosts are able to evade the hits here, though. The Banelings are not enough. Trying to turn it around. Two ghosts get caught out. A bit lazy there. From beyond to lose any of them, but... Yeah, I lost five ghosts so far, but... Dark making no headway. Not able to kill a base. Not killing a significant amount of the army. Overall... Yeah, and now Blue Flame Hellbats on the way. Dark is coming in for another round. Gonna try it again. The Siege Tank count is too damn high. He's got 10 upgraded Siege Tanks. He's getting high sec auto tracking and building armor. Dark may have the rest of the map. And that's, that, that's not an exaggeration. Dark may have the rest of the map. But Beyond has five bases. And he's got a planetary a fortress. Uh, well, actually, I take it back. He Does he actually not have any planetaries? He can't lift planetaries. Which, that is a, such a beyond way of going about it. Ooh. Did, I, did we just see a snipe hit a viper as it abducted? Because the abduct was going out and it hit the ghost as the snipe. I mean... Wow. Couple zerglings. I actually kind of love the lack of planetaries here. Planetaries can be amazing. Essentially a baneling magnet. But orbitals are more economical. Scans, of course, are always helpful. And you can lift them. So long term, they're cheaper. Only cause minerals. And uh, you're very likely to get a return if you're actually microing your units. Like Beyond always is. Where are the infestors? Oh, out of nowhere! Throws out a fungal, doesn't catch too many of the ghosts, but forces a big pickup here. And that will allow Dark to overrun the field for now. He drives beyond back. Liberator still just poking and prodding at everything. But overall, Dark's still not really making any progress. You need to, to deny mining location. Well... There are two options. One is just trade inefficiently, but not so inefficiently you can't make up for it by having two, three more bases. Oh my, is, is, is he confident he's going to get through? And he gets in. The ghost does not cloak in time. More zerglings poppy out of the nidus, but okay, okay, all right. We're cleaning this up. And the liberators are making it immensely difficult to get anything real done here. Blue flame hellbats. Oh, I'm gonna jam into the corner, just melting those zerglings. Oh my god. Well, not bad there. Finally, the very first planetary is uh, morphing. Constructing? I think we've had this discussion before, but... Right in the midst of everything. I don't even know if he wants that planetary, but he, maybe just to get Dark to target it. But still, beyond... We're not seeing the give and take here. Usually what happens, the Zerg smashes a base, Terran trades out and retakes. Beyond is not giving up bases. He's simply- oh, well, he's gonna try to expand over here. Dark has technically at least two, up to four more bases than Beyond. If he allows, like, these two side bases are supposed to be Beyond's, or at least one side of it. So Dark will have significantly more mining. Of course, Beyond is, is trying to equal that out now. He's comfortably sitting on one base at a time. Dark has had an income advantage, but not significantly so. As Beyond is only now mining out of his main and natural. Dark is, well, joining him in that. Lurkers. Yanks in another drop. That was a siege tank in there. This army just not making the progress he needs, though. Dark actually knocked down 50 more supply. Oh my, over the last two minutes, Dark has lost 9,200 minerals and 2,100 gas to just 3,500, 1,600. I'm not sure. Like, he tried a few lurkers. We haven't even seen anything close to Broodlords. The Hydraling Bane and the Road to Ravager are simply not cutting it against an entrenched and well-positioned Terran army. The Liberators and Ghosts are far too efficient. The uh, Hellbats are severely punishing. 
even to Zerglings out of position. Hydras are finding a lot of the SCVs, though. I don't think losing SCVs is the end of the world for Beyond, who currently has nine orbital commands. So, uh, yeah. In fact, that may have helped him in the long run. <laughs> Assuming he doesn't rebuild them. To just have a larger army. Dark is setting up for a massive surround here. There's at least one full energy Viper. EMP hits, though. Parasitic Bomb on a secondary medevac. Great split on the medevacs. Blue Flame Hellbat helping out a lot, but... Beyond taking some pretty heavy losses here. Trades up. What is this army? Hellbat Ghost? You know, if, if it works, it works. And it... Oh my god. That is actually such a great unit composition. Even if anything, like a Viper... Not a Viper, but like Hydras come by. It's not necessarily impotent. So dangerous. Beyond has played a, a relatively, for Beyond, passive game. But he's just exerting so much pressure on Dark. He's coming apart at the seams. He's losing both of his forward bases and the side. Like, blinding cloud on some tanks here, but there's still the Liberator above. It's so difficult to dismantle this, especially if your attention is stretched between different sides of the map. What is this? This is a ghost hit squad. He's just got five ghosts with some meta. I don't know if there were other units, but well, my ghosts are the only ones who survived. I beyond is fully embracing the uh, ghost back composition, which is a pretty sick name, I will say. The Hell Ghost. Doesn't roll off the tongue. Ghost Bat. Yeah, it sounds kind of dumb, just like how effective the composition is against Zerglings, but... Dark is not... The thing is, Beyond has not given up any ground. He, he's actually lost five command centers. But, he currently has ten command centers on the field. Dark has lost five hatcheries. I don't think he has 10 hatcheries on the field, but it might be close. He's got six of them. The actual cost of the base is pales in comparison to the units over time, of course, but Beyond just keeps kind of strong arming his way from side to side. Dark will shift back to the left, assuming Beyond is weaker there. I think he assumed correctly. He's able to break through somewhat. Oh, but a move command! He tried to get under the Liberator, it's doing so much damage! Does it have plus three? I don't think it does, so it's still two shots high. Dark? Oh, he's just broke. He's got nothing left. He gets burnt out of game one. Almost a thousand Zerglings. The cost efficiency. Well, wasn't there in the first place and only kept getting worse. Beyond with a confident victory. Here in, in game one. I'm kind of surprised, like, Dark shoehorned himself into that Roach Ravager timing, which can be incredibly effective on Neo Humanity because of how hard it is to hold on to your third base. But beyond, with an uncanny level of patience, just sat back and defended and let Dark kind of break on his bases. So, a smart move. A bit frustrating to watch as a Zerg, but inspiring as a Terran, which, you know, is kind of par for the course when these two face um, one way or the other. God. Ghost Hellbat Liberator. It kind of a seamless transition into it. There was no point where it felt like, oh, he's going ghost now. They just kind of started appearing. They just started becoming part of the composition without really feeling like it was uh, a big reach for him. It was just such a smooth game from Beyond, despite how often he was under attack and despite how much damage Dark was able to do. I always felt like Beyond had a game plan that stretched a little bit further than what Dark was headed towards. Maybe. I think Neural Parasite at the end of the day. It is a tough map to play in the late game uh, against Terran. The earlier game, and that is why Dark um, tried to smash early on, I have to assume, is as the map gets kind of cut in half, the choke points really constrict for the larger armies. It's only the third base with the wide open concave. 
you know, I'm doing a white, I'm like, a, like you, you got it, you got it. And it <laughs> that uh, really allows for those huge attacks from both angles. It's going to be three for this time, beyond reclaiming the build. Um, that, well, even if he had nothing to do with it, even if Beyond stopped playing for a year and people stopped building Reapers and then if for some reason it popped up again, still Beyond. All right, Beyond, the only player to explicitly, okay, I don't think it was in the patch notes, but the Reaper was nerfed not once but twice when Beyond abused it. Um, the grenades, the healing, started building medevacs with them. There was a time when Beyond would just build two medevacs full of Reapers, and that was the early game. Um, now, usually Marines, but sometimes still Reapers. But <laughs> my point is that essentially it's like a retired unit. If anyone builds that unit, they, they got to pay tribute to Beyond. All right, they got the Reaper hung up in the, uh, the stadium uh, out of respect. Not exactly a perfect equivalent, but you got what I was going for. Sports people know what I'm talking about. You guys like sports. Yeah. Sports. It's like eSports, except outside, so it's kind of horrible. Well, most of them. All right, so it's three racks, Reaper, by the way. The Tri-Rex. Which... Much harder to actually, well, one, obviously way more committed. I think Dark has recognized it and isn't going to try to chase down the Reapers explicitly. He's given up that third hatchery in favor of trying to do counter damage. If the door is open, which it won't be, but if the door is open or he busts through it, then certainly Dark can, can uh, turn that around, but... This is an incredibly annoying... Ooh, that's not a bad position to try to snap those Reapers. There's that high ground. Whoa, a grenade misses the mark and actually ends up hitting more of the Reapers than it hits the Zerglings. There's no jump location over here. He's backed into a quarter, caught between a rock and a hard place, and the Zerglings get the surround and rip them to shreds. Ugh. Finally. It... I think Beyond just caught a little bit unawares and probably... Uh, off guard by how is he just gonna keep building reapers you know i joked about that like keep building reapers in the medevacs build but it looks like that's exactly what he's doing beyond stop it this is this was pretty much the late stage of the meta that got the reaper nerfed by the way the once beyond just started deciding like i don't actually need marines i could just go re like literally just reaper Oh my god, not again. Not this again. He's just he's doing it. Oh. Um, uh, look up Locera versus Beyond in GSL from like five, six years ago. I think that was the highlight series, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, before the final Reaper -ner. I can't believe he's just going Medivac Reapers. Oh my god. God. Well, he's doing, like, he's doing a single medevac Reaper Liberator. Which is the most try-hard version of it, of course. He's not going mass Reaper. It's a Reaper drop team. Which, you know, they can jump over cliffs, but they can't fly in the air for long. So, that's what the medevac is for. And the healing is nice. Unfortunately, Beyond ends up losing one reactor, another one badly bruised. Because he is on the inconvenient side of the map for those front add-ons. Uh, was that a dog and a liote? Oh, no, he missed it. But, everybody, hey, there's a surprising amount of animals just wandering around in this pitched battlefield. The Reaper meta- I can't, but the Reaper vac. Oh my god. Ah. Great reaction to- but 
One of those drones was in the extractor when the orders came down. No, 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 Brenda! You gotta be very careful. Can't touch your toe in. That liberator's watching. All right, but wait, there's more. Picks up the reapers into the medevac. Oh, it's disgusting. No, God, he kills two queens of the liberator. But the liberator is dead. Didn't get a spore crawler because Dark was certainly not expecting a liberator. This e You see a reactored starport and a bunch of, like, reapers and marines? Are you thinking liberator at, like, the six-minute mark? No. You're not gonna build a spore crawler. You're not prepared for that. And that's why the Liberator came in. Just like this uh, this slight bamboozle there. Thing is, though, D Dark's at 82 drones. What? All right, they got that rabbit DNA in there. I know, Abathur, what have you been up to? He's got, like, the perk with the double drone product. He's at 80 drones. This madman. Up against, he lost his third. I mean, he canceled it, but his third was delayed. But he did catch the Reapers, and then, well, that was not the end of map control there. Wow, that's an insane drone explosion. I believe in the Age of the Empires, they call that booming. And indeed, Dark truly embracing that, that kind of Zerg drone explosion. Much more pronounced in Wings of Liberty back when there was a, a bit of a longer macro phase. But, yeah, Dark is now at a late game economy. 80 drones, 5 bases. He is good to go. All he's got to do is is minimize damage. And uh, oh, this is true at all times. But all he's got to do is is keep Beyond off his bases and out of his economy. He doesn't... It's not really on him to, to get damage done to Beyond. It's the other way around here. Yeah, as dark as 2-2 on the way, he's got his hive started. Yeah, what a tone shift from the previous game. Those roaches and ravagers just not having the same sort of utility. The Zerglings of Fort. And beyond, with his fancy... Well, he's still going with the Reapers, because of course he is. If only they still had their building grenades. No, I'd argue the, uh, the ground grenades are actually much more dangerous to unit, obviously. Medivac flies off into the distance. The Reapers... Whoa, whoa, whoa! There's an animation for them healing inside the Medivac. That's the Reapers healing themselves. How, you know, that's a bit, that's a bit meta right there. The Reapers inside the medevac, which heals them outside of it. The mines. Ooh, those are some big hits. Target fire. You mean target practice for beyond. Those are slow banes. Yet, oh, uh, one of them finishes. And that one baneling makes all the difference. But oh my God, what a beautiful set. And just like that, beyond turns the pressure around again. All those banelings getting targeted down. Widowmind's on the field. Beyond now has 74 SCVs. He's got a fourth command center about to complete with 2-2 two -two done on the field. He's up against a far superior Zerg army, but he's already pushed the creep back significantly. If he can get 2-2 two -two and oh my god, he's gonna trigger Dark, you genius! I don't know if he did it on purpose, but he triggered the Widow Mine because the Changeling didn't convert into a Terran unit because it didn't see any Terran units to convert. So it kind of worked against him. Oh no, the mine actually hit a lot of the Banelings. Beyond, microing back. He's got one more Widow Mine in the mix there. Comes around the corner. Dark is... Oh, he's filling out his army. Where's those adrenal glands, Dark? Yeah, it looks like he wants to do real damage here. There's that Widow Mine off to the side. There's not that much behind. He actually wraps around, catches him. Great target for out of Beyond, but he's pushed up against his own supply depot. Widow Mine, none of them trigger. Not in time. Banelings crashing through. There's not enough left. And Dark just smashes down the door. That's enough of that. Dark strikes back. All right, all right. That's more like it. I can't believe he tried the Reaper vac again. That... The hubris. All right. To go for that. Especially after he already lost... Like, if he, had, if he hadn't lost the initial Reapers? Okay. But he lost all his Reapers, and he's like, what if I built more Reapers and flew them around and... Dark exploding in 80 drones in 7 minutes after the Reaper pressure. Madness. Okay. Ugh. This man knows his drones better than the Air Force, all right, and almost as dangerous with them. 
dark. In the top right, beyond the bottom left, Ancient Sister. Here we go again. All tied up, as you might expect, between these two. Nearly evenly ranked overall. And we already saw kind of the split there. What happened in the first game early game? I'm kind of thinking back. Well, it was a bit of a passive one. And then Dark went into the Roach. I think Beyond just read him. Like, he knew it was going to be the Roach Ravager timing. That last game? Well, Dark read Beyond. He, Beyond didn't think he'd commit to that amount of Zerglings early. Which is weird, because Dark almost always does that. Not every play Some players, like Sarah, will build like four Roaches. Uh, or just enough Zerglings. But... Dark sometimes will just hold down the Z key until it feels uh, like he can't anymore. And that was definitely one of those times. I'm going to take a wild guess and say it's going to be Marines. All right. I know it's bold, but I'll bet you one subscribe. It'll be Marines. The one game. The one game per year that Beyond goes mech. It's coming up right now. You know, I could have, I could have, I could have hedged my bets and waited. Oh my god. There's not a small chance, actually. It's not a high chance, because it's beyond. Dark lost that... Well, it, there's no Reaper at all. So, Dark sent the Overlord in, because usually it's safe, because either there's one or more Reapers. But two Marines... Those don't count for my bet, by the way. Um, that's just your normal overlord scouting or overlord killing marines that you build if you don't go reaper. It's just Beyond rarely passes up that opportunity. Oh my god. He's taking a second guess. Beyond, what are you doing? He's going for a hectored I'm getting nervous over here. It is a 1-1-1 one, one, one in, like, the weirdest possible fashion. What is he going to put in that area? Is that for... That's, like, enough space for an engineering bay and an armory? Maybe a third command center? I don't think it fits. This is such a... There's not a wall. There's no wall up. This is so weird. Banshee, cloak Banshee. I think it has to be Armory Hellbat. And there's a Tech Lab Barracks making me feel a little better. Though, yeah, that's not... Well, who walls off with Reactor Hellion Factory? Beyond does now. I think Terrans have realized, like, well... You might as well have your stronger buildings in the front, because if they break through, you're probably screwed anyways. Though I haven't quite seen it like this before. The Hellions just run by. Dark tries to block the Hellions, sidestep it slightly. Oh no, oh no, five drone, no! Oh, and he, he slides by, he baits the queen out of position. More in the main. Oh no, it's a disaster here for Dark. Even if he does, like, eight drones and all this mining time. And this is a very key timing too. The Hellions still going. He forced out those those Evo chambers. Oh my. And then a Cloak Banshee on the way to follow it up, by the way. Dark was so busy dealing with that, he doesn't have a Spore Cloak in 14 seconds. And he has to effectively kill more of his workers in order to build those Spores. So the Banshee's existing has already done damage. He just ran by with the Hellions. A uh, classic gamble, but it pays off. Ooh! Dark kind of baits the Banshee a little bit further and almost gets something for it, but it's not quite enough. Hmm. Hey, wow. Just patrolling the area between the bases. There's no creep, there's no detection, there's no lair. 
Oh, he even gets a drone. Being real cute with the Banshee micro. Oh my, he's right out of detection range. God. Beyond doesn't let you have that. Like, no, 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 Brenda, come back! Oh, he wants it. What a day! Dark is trying to bounce back, but look at the difference. You have 57 drones here. He does not have a lair. His upgrades aren't looking particularly great. Beyond is going for a two base marine timing. Oh, there you go. Behind it. It is not looking good. For the final boss here. As he's now, he's right now, this moment, building everything he needs to defend against Beyond with a, a seven, seven and a half minute push. Unfortunately, we're at six and a half minutes and Beyond's already on the porch, which. That Banley Nuss is not done. Those upgrades are not online. The lair is not completed. He has a bunch of queens and some speedlings. And I don't think he's going to get much more by the time uh, Beyond decides to pull back. Here's the thing. He knows he did a lot of damage to the economy. He knows that Dark wouldn't be playing so timidly if he had Banelings. He also knew exactly... Well, he knew there wasn't a lair when he came on in with the Hellions. So he has a pretty good bead on when Baneling speed can be. And the simple answer is not for a while yet. The Zerglings. Ah, oh, the Siege Tank doing some damage here to Beyond. He was tempted to, to try to target down some of the Banes. Bane speed should be starting immediately for Dark. Literally goes down to two gas. He's sitting there waiting for that moment. D Beyond is just jamming his Siege Tanks into every little corner. Siege Tanks are much like cats. Okay. If they see bugs, they want to murder them. And also, they'll sit in every little corner you can jam them into. It's like, you can't go there, Siege Tank. Put me in your medevac. Now put me down so I can siege up. I'm a cat in this analogy. Mm. No, it does, it's, right now, it doesn't look like Dark's up to scratch. I... The momentum is all towards beyond. And even if Baneling Speed finishes, well, the big thing is no third command center. Without a third command center, Beyond can't lose this army. At least not without trading dramatically. And the thing is, it's kind of hard for Beyond to lose an army to anything that isn't Speed Banes. God. It's almost embarrassing watching Slow Banes try to fight Beyond like it's insulting to him. Come back when you have something real. 10 seconds on Baneling speed. I'm sure Beyond knows what is about to happen, but he's already pre-spread. He's set up for it. There is no third. Dark is wrapping all the way around here, but there's nothing to counter it. He's going to try to cut off some of the reinforcements, but Beyond is sending out like tower defense waves here. And all right, well, here comes some of the Banelings. The creep is already receding. He does have one creep tumor. More Banelings coming in, plus one armor, though, done for Beyond's Marines. Speed Banes. Oh, my. He doesn't even have any medevacs. Dark is getting nothing here. The Banelings will burrow. Did he notice? Does it matter? Uh, it died to siege tank fire accidentally. He didn't even scan. Plus two Carapace is done for the 16 Lings or so he has left. Six, I'm sorry. Be honest, tearing through everything. It's too much. As Beyond, in classic Beyond fashion, grabs hold of the momentum and carries it through. Now, the Queen's getting gunned down. And Beyond goes up two to one. A solid effort. It all started like the, the Hellion run by. I, it's such a gamble. It's one of those things that high level players don't do. Heavy air quotes. Because if you if they just had eight, ten Zerglings and you lose the Hellions, you've lost all map control. They get all the creep spread. Dark's back at 80 drowned. So he gambles a bit. It's like a medium risk and a high reward situation. Um, but 
it de certainly can can backfire uh, if the Hellions don't fire at all. But it didn't. It it was the defining moment of the early game, and now defines the fact that Beyond is in the lead up against Dark, going into Babylon. Dark unable to really work his magic because Beyond never really gave him any space to do so. Double barracks. Different build every game. I mean, they all kind of end up in the same spot. It's it's almost a reverse. Um, where Terran builds, especially Beyond's builds, are like all your fingers closing into a fist. Whether it's Hellions, Reapers, Banshees, Marines, or any combination. They end up at Marine Tank, and then Liberator goes. Whereas for Zerg, you start with, no matter what, it's going to be Queens. Uh, maybe Zerglings or Roaches, but focused on the Queens. Good creep spread, expanding. And then Roaches, Infestors, Lings, Banes, Hydras. Uh, maybe eventually we'll have a certain unit composition, but the Zerg army branches out. As opposed to the Terran army kind of being boiled down. Neither is necessarily good or bad, but you can really see it pronounced in how these two play. Um, but if Dark is not able to really unfurl and, and spread his beautiful wings like a angry butterfly, then Beyond will easily be able to pin him down. Oh no. No, not two. Well, that's not good. Definitely not three. But there's another... No. Two drones. And more Reapers are coming in. It's another Tri-Rex. You face Tri-Rexes. Reaper Lord of the Terran Legion. Here we go again. Two out of four games so far, the Mass Reaper. It didn't work out last time, but Beyond starts out with two drone kills, which is more than he got before. There's two gases back at home for Beyond. The third hatchery will be canceled. We'll see. And I don't think uh, Beyond is going to get caught out on the map again. I don't think that's uh, something that's going to happen. He's going to be very wary of it here. Really, at this stage, when you've already denied the third, the only big mistake you can make is losing the Reapers. Uh, even if you trade for a lot of Zerglings, those Reapers are kind of keeping Dark pinned back. Look at the, look at the drone cap. He's going to try to... He has to kill the Reapers now. Beyond is kind of gambling that Dark is making these links. Look how close he's staying to his base, despite how many Reapers he has. He can feel it. He's reading Dark so well. In fact, I think he's predicting a Bane bust. The Reapers are hiding in the main. Like, he's, he's worried about Banelings coming through right now. Which, I'm kind of surprised Dark didn't actually add a Bane Nest. Dark is looking for the Reapers, but they're they're all locked up tight. This is an example, like... This is another gamble, by the way. This is beyond gambling that Dark will do what he thinks he's going to do. Because being out there fighting against the Zerglings, kind of going back and forth, keeping scouting info, is also risky. But if Dark is making just enough Lings, it's probably a better move. But in this case, Dark made so many Zerglings that they easily would kill the Reapers. Beyond, without that knowledge, decided to keep his Reapers in his base, suspecting that Dark would do exactly that. So, here we are. Now we have Metavax on the way the Reaper. Wow. 
They're staying so far back. He doesn't, he hasn't seen anything. There's an overlord. He's almost certain that overlord is there. Just watch him. From the pervert pillar up there, as they do. He's, he's trying to bait the links. He knows that overlord is there. He's using the, look at the vision. Okay, go back. Leon, go back. He keeps poking out to the left side. Every time he goes by this air. Oh my god. He's. Uh, oh my god! Oh, I thought he evaded it perfectly. Never mind. I'm like, he's actually a super genius. Maybe he was doing that, but ends up getting out on the map before Dark can really deal with it. Here come a lot more Zerglings, but the medevacs are just in time! And the Marines, well, they're kind of caught out. This is the best surface area. No, it's not remotely close to. Wow, no. No. And that was without combat shield, and most of that fight was without plus one. Oh, no. <sighs> 24 Banelings on the way, but they are slow Banes. And they're still Reapers. It's a bit... Oh my god. No, no, no. Those aren't gonna work. Yeah, those are slow banes against Beyond. Don't insult him! How dare you! Beyond doesn't know either. He actually loses a Reaper too because of an awkward target, but... Bunch of banelings? No, he taps out! Oh! oh, oh he taps out before! Because it doesn't matter. There's a siege. It's gonna take too much. Beyond decisively defeats Dark, three to one. I think this was truly like Beyond has Dark's number. It's his nemesis. Ah, uh, his Terran nemesis. Hero, of course, being the Protoss one. But what a beautiful series out of Beyond. I think playing against Dark as much as he was playing Terran versus Zerg. But it's not easy to pick apart the second ranked Zerg in the world. But then again, there are two types of people, Cyril and everyone else. So, Dark here, getting whittled down and knocked out, and Beyond showing, able to show off a lot of his incredible micro and use it to great effect. And I hope you use your incredible micro to great effect. Like, subscribe. If you haven't yet checked out Patreon, you can get your name on the wall. Or if you don't care about that, because, I mean, let's be honest, you can support the content if you got the means and motivation thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed i hope i made your day a little bit better good luck have fun i'll see you next time stay chill